My friends, sometimes, believe it or not, it doesn't always keep happening. Speedrunners are generally very resourceful gamers who, thanks to the strength of large community numbers, often come up with insane strategies to help them beat their games as quickly as possible. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes, speedrunners overlook strategies that seem like they should have been incredibly obvious in hindsight. There's this great tweet by speedrun YouTuber Bismuth, which went quite viral recently. People, OMG, speedrunners are insane. How do they find these crazy tricks and glitches? They're geniuses. Speedrunners. So today, after 15 years, we found out you can just press R during this section to save 20 seconds. It's a normal feature of the game, and we just didn't know it existed. Indeed, ain't that the truth. And as you'll see today, that might only be a mild exaggeration of how speedrunners can miss some incredible, obvious time-saving strategies. Today, we have five stories of insane strategies that were somehow overlooked in the speed game GoldenEye 007. So here we go. But first, my friends, on the topic of incredible strategies, I must introduce you to today's video sponsor, a brand new mobile game, ACE Defender. Indeed, ACE Defender is a strategy role-playing game with elements of tower defense. There are five hero factions with 48 heroes at launch, but new ones get added in every two weeks, making the game even more complex when choosing which ones to power up and gear up as you make your way through the PvP, PvE, or solo game modes. It's an incredibly deep game with the campaign or expedition mode, the solar player RPG storyline, comprising 2,000 levels across 40 chapters, so it would really be quite the daunting game to speedrun. You can play at one, two, or four times your gameplay speed, and I always like playing as fast as possible, whether it's playing PvE Trials or PvP Arena, you know, because I'm a speedrunner, like to get in as much action as I can. And if you download the game from the link in my description and get to level 10, you'll receive 700 diamonds, 7 royal recruit tickets, 50 blue hero fragments, 50 rare random equip fragments, the legendary hero sealed bullword, and 150,000 gold. That's a lot of gold. I really think this is going to be the next big game in mobile gaming, so check it out now with the link in description. And a huge thanks again to the Epic Game ACE Defender for sponsoring this video. And now, here we go. So on the Aztec stage, there are a number of tricks one can perform to get guards to open the glass door, thus skipping having to eliminate Jaws, saving countless time like well over 30 seconds of time save. For a very long time, throughout the mid-2000s, many of these glass door tricks involved running beyond the glass, making a whole bunch of noise, luring guards to your attention, running back towards the glass, having the guards see you there and think you're in or around the glass, then you go to hide and the guards seek you by the glass opening the door. A very cool strategy that redefined the way Goldeneye was played at that time. However, sometimes randomly, when you're on a really great run, this guard, instead of opening the mainframe like a good mate, would get stuck in it for unknown reasons, causing you to have to reset, since passing him away and waiting for the mainframe to open would waste far too much time. This was annoying, but it was just part of the speedrun life. Not every run can be a winner. Over the years, the strategies on the level evolved, eventually settling on a consistent strategy where you could shoot one burst of your AR-33 in this corner to force that guard to get stuck in the mainframe, and then perform some kind of trickery to cause him, plus a guard behind him, to open the glass door. This wasn't exactly the very fastest glass strategy known in the level, but it was the most consistent by far, and so it was the most commonly used. Many speedrunners were able to score times of 138 and 139 on Double O Agent with this technique, while the world record sat at 135 using a faster, albeit much less consistent, glass strategy. For some reason, throughout the late 2010s and into the early 2020s, speedrunners just forgot that this guard often gets naturally stuck in the mainframe, allowing you to skip this little detour of firing an AR-33 burst in the corner, 
saving about two seconds. Now, it's not perfectly consistent to always get him stuck in the mainframe without forcing it, but in comparison to strategies used in the mid-2000s, it's not bad at all. When everyone collectively remembered that, oh yeah, sometimes on 10 or 20% of runs, that guard does just get stuck in the mainframe through the natural course of playing the level, there began somewhat of a rush on the stage, which resulted in a number of players improving their personal bests to 137 or 136, as well as yours truly and speedrunner True Faith finally tying the record of 135 after it had remained untied for nearly four years. This only precipitated, however, the incredible 134 of Gus Riolo, where he not only gets a natural stuck mainframe guard, but also combines this by performing the legendary body armor skip to set the amazing untied world record. It's just truly remarkable that these records may not have happened had the community not collectively remembered that the guard does sometimes get randomly stuck in the mainframe, saving time, and giving everyone the confidence to push the level to new heights. So on Train Secret and Double O Agent, the goal is to get to the end of the train as quickly as possible and eliminate General Ormov. This starts an in-game timer from which Natalia completes her hacking objectives. So it can be said that the moment you shoot Ormov, there's nothing left to do to speed up the level and your end timer is kind of set from that moment on. In January 2006, legendary Goldeneye speedrunner Big Boss Man set a great record of 142 on Train Secret Agent, where he very intentionally tries to shoot Ormov from as far away as possible, thus starting the internal timer as early as possible. Something that, while fairly difficult, is very intuitively the optimal strategy on the train level. Prior to this point, speed gamers were running into the final boxcar, eliminating Ormov with the watch laser from very close, and this is very clearly much, much slower. However, this new shoot Ormov from far away strategy got kind of lost in the fold when a sequence break was found on train that same month, January 2006. In the excitement of what would become a roughly 14 second time saver, players started playing once again for consistency, intentionally or not, and moved towards the more consistent, more up close Ormov eliminations. After all, when faced with a 14 second time save, it does make some sense to begin playing for consistency, saving 10 or 12 of those seconds, before slowly continuing to optimize the stage as you naturally progress. However, for some strange and unknown reason, the up-close Ormov eliminations would continue as the predominant strategy for 15 years until tool assisted speedrun OG and train specialist Weister would remember the far Ormov shot and use it on his train secret agent 122, an untied world record, which resulted in him completing the rare untied sweep. It's just yet one more hilarious example of how speedrunners forgot about something that saves one second due to getting caught up in something else that saved a lot more time, and is a reminder that just because one strategy cuts a lot of time in a speed game, try not to forget about the other, smaller optimizations. Okay, so this one is a bit ridiculous. The Bunker 2 level is a very complex, high action level, where pretty much at every moment you're shooting out a camera, picking up an item, working on completing some objective. The one exception is this guard who holds a clipboard, part of an objective, and he's relatively far away from anything else important on the stage. In 2006, on the Double Agent difficulty, we began doing a lure technique firing a bunch of KF7 shots to attract him to a position less out of the way. While this added a little more inconsistency to the level, it did seem to save about 5 seconds. Naturally, you'd expect we'd find a similar route when luring the clipboard guard on Secret Agent, since he's in the same spot and hence equally as far out of the way, but no one really did. That is, until 2014, when the aforementioned Weister came up with a clipboard lure strategy with which he failed a time of 44 seconds. Now the world record at the time was 44 seconds by true faith, and because this new strategy wasn't pacing an obviously untied world record, it went really under the radar. Foolishly, of course. In 2016, Weister actually completed a speedrun with a clipboard lure strategy, 46 seconds, which was a very solid time, 
and it seemed like at least 43 or lower was possible with the strategy, but again this went largely ignored, or at least unattempted by others. Finally, in September 2019, the Bunker 2 Secret Agent Speedlore episode featured these runs once more, and pondered if the strategy might actually finally be used in the near future. This finally clicked for all-time great runner Perfect Ace, who on October 2nd, one day after the Spielar episode was uploaded to YouTube, went out there and relatively caked a time of 42 seconds, a two-second untied world record. It was kind of ridiculous that this route through the bunker on Secret Agent went unattempted by everyone for five years, and then the moment someone tried it, they immediately got a two-second untied world record. Remarkably, the strategy continues to be overlooked by many, as no one else has pulled off a run with it. And as most of you will know, there's a separate new strategy on Bunker 2, the Arlene Jail Cell Warp, which saves 3 to 5 seconds, and so you would think someone might combine that strategy with the Clipboard Lure for a relatively easy untied world record. But no, speedrunners still continue to overlook the Bunker 2 Secret Agent Clipboard Lure route for literally no reason at all. So Frigate Agent is a notorious stage, where you have to repeat the same short level over and over again until you get the luck needed for both hostages to escape, completing Objective A. When Goldeneye legend Water Jansen achieved the untied world record of 23 seconds back in 2005, this was the result of about 150 hours of repetitive grinding, playing the stage over and over again until all the luck finally came together. Now the order we'd free these two hostages was to release the slower one first, then the faster one, giving the slower guy much more time to escape. This intuitively makes sense, and it was just always accepted that much of the time he would bump into this chair, or get stuck on guards, or whatever trollery might happen, resulting in him not escaping, and you might sometimes need to play dozens or hundreds of hours to get the completion you're looking for. And that's just the way things are on Frigate Agent. However, Earlier this year, speedrunning mad scientist White Ted discovered that if you release the hostages in a reverse order, and then make sure to look away from the room you were just in, this can actually unload objects in that room, virtually ensuring that the hostages will take their optimal path to the escape points, instead of getting stuck on random stuff throughout the frigate. Their various obstacles become unloaded, and hence it's much more common to get completions on the frigate stage. You don't get completions every single run, but certainly way more frequently than we did in the past. Since this discovery a few months ago, 18 players have basically caked Frigate Agent 23. And prior to this, only 29 players had ever achieved 23 or better in the previous 16 years. So to say Frigate 23 has become much more commonplace is quite the understatement. Now, while unloading the script of NPCs and whatnot isn't exactly obvious, and does require a lot of technical knowledge, the fact that no one ever seriously tried to examine the idea of releasing the hostages in reverse order is just kind of incredible, and seems like something that should have been investigated much earlier. But in any manner, a big shout out to White Ted for discovering this technique, and bringing it into the GoldenEye speedrunning meta. Now, this one is a little bit different because it's a strategy that could be overlooked, but we're not exactly sure yet. On Facility, Secret and Double Agent, one objective is to contact Dr. Doak, who gives you this door decoder, which you must use to unlock this door and gain entry into the bottling room, the final room on the level. Doak can be in seven locations throughout the facility, so speedrun conventions just play until you get the lucky, roughly 1 in 7 run, where he's in the fastest or nearest location to your path, and then carry on. You need to pause to select the door decoder, and then once you press Z to activate it at this door, it takes a couple of seconds for the door to actually crack open. Pausing here loses about 5 seconds, and so one might imagine that skipping this pause has the potential to save a lot of time, if possible. Well, it is possible. By running into this room and firing about 18 shots, you can make enough noise to lure a guard to open the decoder door instead, 
and this guard opens the door pretty quickly compared to waiting around a few seconds for the decoder to crack the code. Now this whole detour does seem to take about 5 or 6 seconds, so it is really hard to say if this is faster, or equal to the more common technique, or slightly slower, but it doesn't seem far off. An added benefit of this strategy is that there's two Doke locations you encounter. If Doke is in his best location, he'll come running towards you and hand you the decoder as you're leaving the glass lab room, and naturally he can also be in that glass lab room. So the added effect is that the strategy doubles your chances to complete the Doke objective. Consistency is huge in speedrunning, so it's really shocking that we haven't seen many players attempt this decoder door lure strategy, something that would surely help them improve their personal records thanks to the added consistency in completing a random objective and it possibly being a little bit faster. So there are five strategies in GoldenEye 007 speedrunning that were or are overlooked, and just more examples that, despite the usual brilliance of speedrunners coming up with insane techniques to save lots of time and perform amazing speedruns, sometimes we just miss things. And it's really insane when a whole community collectively misses something relatively obvious for many, many years. If you know of something in your speed game community that was missed and should have been obvious for many years, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you never miss one of my epic videos about the fascinating world of speedrunning. Stay true, my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.